Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So this is part two of my Q&A. Um, last week I was answering part one of your questions because I was asking you guys um, to kind of let me know anything you wanted to know, um, hair related, non-hair related. So you guys came through with your questions. There was quite a lot of questions to answer. So um, as I said, I've done a part one and this is part two. Um, if you haven't already checked out part one, then go ahead and check that out and then check out this one as well. But firstly, if you're new to my channel, thanks so much for stopping by my name is julie and on my channel you'll find lots of hair care tips tutorials hairstyles all that type of stuff so if you like what you see then please go ahead and subscribe so guys last week as well i was wearing my hair in twists i told you guys that i was prepping my hair for a twist out because i was asking what style you guys wanted me to do, whether you wanted me to do a twist out or a wash and go. And the majority of you guys went for a twist out. So this is the result of my twist out, all done. I'm loving it, I'm loving how defined it is. Um, and also thanks so much for your comments, your wonderful comments on you know how it turned out. I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I've posted it, as I said, on my socials. So some of you may have seen it, but if not, you can go ahead and check out my socials. Okay guys, so let's get straight into answering your questions. Okay, so the first question is, what is your hair regimen? Okay, so my hair routine is pretty much simple. Um, I wash in deep condition, mainly every two weeks. Um, I moisturize my hair whenever it feels like being moisturized. Um, so for example, if I moisturize my hair on a Monday, I may not moisturize it again till Tuesday or Wednesday. Again, as, it, as I said, it depends on how it feels. Um, I like to seal the ends of my hair with oils or butters after I've moisturized it. Um, I do scalp massages a few times throughout the week. It could be two to three times. Um, I avoid using any heat on my hair. Um, I probably only use heat on my hair once a year when I'm doing lamp checks. Um, and yeah, I, I kind of wear a lot of low maintenance hairstyles as well. So um, it could be like um, a high puff or um, obviously twist out as a perfect low maintenance style because you don't have to do much with it. I basically just take care when I'm handling my hair just to make sure that, you know, it's um, not being damaged in any way. So the next question is, what hair products do you use? Okay, so um, one of my absolute favorite moisturizers has to be um, Aunt Jackie's Instant Detangling Therapy. I've been using that for so long. It's very moisturizing, so I love using that. Um, another one I started using again, which was an old product of mine from way, way back in the day when I first started out my hair journey, and that's the World of Curls Oil Sheen Spray. It is so moisturizing, and whenever I spray my hair with that, I don't have to moisturize my hair for days. So I absolutely love using that as well. Um, a new one I started using recently is by Curl Mix and it's their avocado moisturizer, which is really good. Um, so those are the products that I use for moisturizing. I actually did um, an updated video showing all the products that I use on my hair. So I'll put the link in the description box for you to check it out to see what else I'm using. Okay, so the next question is, how often do you think the Afro hair need to be hydrate or hydrated? Um, so I'd say as often as your hair needs it really because everyone's hair is completely different. Some people have low prostate hair, normal or high prostate hair. So someone with high prostate hair will probably moisturize their hair more often than someone that's got normal prostate. So it's just knowing that what your hair needs, put moisture in your hair, see how long your hair lasts um, for before it gets dry again and then add more moisture. And that's just the best way of getting to know your hair to know um, what it needs. Okay, so the next question is... Hi dear, do you still use the DIY Shea Butter Moisturiser on your hair and how often do you use it per week? Also, do you combine it with the Aunt Jackie's Detangling Therapy Moisturiser? Okay, so yes, um, I still use my Shea Butter DIY mix. Um, I haven't been using it as often as I was before because I, I mentioned in my last video about the no oils, no butters. I kind of laid or eased off of it for a little bit, um, but I am using it again. And yes, I do combine it with the Aunt Jackie's Instant Detangling Therapy, perfect combination, but I don't use as much of the butter as I used to. I kind of just like use it very lightly on my hair just so I don't weigh it down and that I don't have too much product build up. Um, and how often do you use it per week? So yeah, again, just as often as I need to. So if I'm moisturizing my hair, it could be maybe once, maybe twice a week. It just depends on how my hair feels. So the next question is, what hobbies do you enjoy besides hair vids? 
Yes, so outside of hair videos, um, I enjoy traveling whenever there's an opportunity to go somewhere. I just kind of enjoy getting away from the hustle and bustle of life and just having some relaxation and some fun times, you know. Um, I also enjoy working out whenever I get the chance to, to just kind of, you know, keep fit and healthy. Um, I also enjoy listening to motivational podcasts and ebooks and, you know, anything that's going to help me to better myself. Um, and I love listening to, to music as well. So the next question is, where are you from? How old is Olivia? Okay, so I am from the UK um, in Essex. That's not too far from London. Um, and Olivia is six years old. Okay, so the next question is, how to keep hair moisturised between washes? Product suggestions. Okay, so yeah, so once you've obviously washed, deep conditioned and moisturised your hair, what you want to do is just make sure that when you are moisturising your hair that you're using the best possible methods to keep the moisture in. So if you like to use oils or butters, then you can try the LCO method, which is liquid cream oil. Apply your liquid, add your cream and then um, seal with an oil or a butter to lock it all in. Um, and yeah, just make sure that, you know, you, you can also spritz your hair with water in between if need be, just to make sure that it's moisturized. And if it feels dry at any time, then just add more product to it. In terms of product suggestions, um, as I mentioned before, Aunt Jackie's Instant Detangling Therapy is so good for moisturizing. It's perfect for my hair. You might want to try that out as well. Um, what I will do is I will put, um, again, the link to the videos that, um, of my last product update. There's quite a few there. And also, I do have my Amazon store. I'll put a link to the moisturizers in there because there are quite a few recommendations that you might want to check out. So the next question is, what are the most important ingredients to look for in a natural hair product? Okay, so when it comes to your moisturizers, you want to make sure that they contain long chain or fatty alcohols. These alcohols um, contain moisturizing properties that are going to keep your hair moisturized, soft, smooth, basically easier to manage. Another thing you can look out for is humectants. They contain moisturizing agents. Again, they're going to keep your hair moisturized and easier to manage. Um, so some of them are like glycerin, um, honey, um, aloe vera, and also some other popular um, ingredients are shea butter, coconut oil, avocado oil, jojoba oil, to name a few. And also you want to make sure that your products, particularly your deep conditioners, contain some protein in it because our hair needs a balance of both protein and moisture in order to balance the elasticity within our hair strands so our hair doesn't break. Um, so some proteins you can look out for are amino acids, um, carotene, collagen, um, pethanol, um, to mention a few as well. Okay, so the next question is, do you braid your hair? So... I don't really braid my hair that often actually, no. Um, it's only if I'm going away on holiday and I feel like having a break from my hair, that's the only time that I will braid it. Since I've been natural, which is four and a half years now, I've only braided my hair, I think twice. Um, and as I said, that's when I've gone away. Um, but I, I do love box braids, you know, I do love it. And it's, it's a nice opportunity to give my hair a break. Um, but yeah, I kind of just rock my natural hair most of the time. So the next question is, Hi, why haven't you included your younger daughter in any of your videos? Also, where are you from? Are your kids biracial? Okay, so my youngest daughter is Ava and she's free. Um, I actually was going to do a video with her um, a while ago. I wanted to do her wash day routine, but she does not like her hair being washed. Even now, she just she just cries, you know, so much so. So I don't really want to put her through that at the moment. Um, when my six-year-old daughter, Olivia, was that age, she wasn't so bad. She did cry a little bit, but she wasn't as bad as Ava. So I haven't put her in any videos yet because of that. Also, I did want to do a hairstyles video with her, but it hasn't been the right time because I kind of tend to film late in the evenings and obviously I can't do it if she's obviously tired um, but I do hope to do a video with her soon so look out for that. So I am from as I mentioned earlier from the UK um, in Essex and are my kids biracial? No they're not biracial they're black. Okay so the next question is which shampoo would advise for kids from baby age please? Okay, so when my kids were all small, from newborn to six months, I didn't really put anything on their hair. I just used water and sometimes I'd use extra virgin olive oil. Um, but it wasn't until they were like over six months that I started incorporating hair products. Um, the one that I remember using, the hair care brand by Cantu, I remember using their kids range, their shampoo, their conditioner and their moisturiser. Um, but... Um, 
one that I'm using at the moment, I use Aunt Jackie's Kids on my girls' hair. So you can check out them because they do have a range for kids. Um, also, as I am, have a range, Born Curly, you can check that out as well. And Camille Rose have a kids' range for babies. So check those out. I'm sure they'll have some good shampoos um, that you'll probably like to use. So the next question is, what's your view on the use of glycerin for moisturising hair? Okay, so glycerin, as I mentioned, is a really great humectant. Um, it contains moisturising agents that are going to moisturise your hair and keep it soft and manageable. I used to use glycerin mixed with water years ago, which worked well, but you have to get the ratio right when you're making it up so that it kind of works properly. Um, personally, now I prefer to have it um, kind of formulated within a product. So if you want to try it, then obviously you can go ahead, but just make sure you've kind of looked up how to make it properly if you're doing your DIY. Um, but if not, you can also just look for products that contain it in the ingredients. Okay, so the next question is, why is the hair at the back and sides of my head shorter than the crown of my head? Also, why is my hair plateauing? Also, why did you go natural? Okay, so the hairs at the back and sides of your head um, are shorter than the crown. That could maybe be genetics, it could be hereditary. Um, also, it could be that there's not enough blood circulation in those areas because each hair follicle has its own blood supply. Um, so maybe there's just, you know, just not enough blood flow going to that area. So I would say to make sure that you're eating well, you're drinking lots of water and you're exercising because exercising is a great way to kind of get the blood pumping through the body. So try that out if you're not already doing so. Um, the other part of your question, um, also why is it plateauing? Again, it could be for that reason because of the blood circulation. Also, um, it, you know, do you have a hair routine? Because if you don't, then you want to make sure that you're taking care of your hair well in order for it to flourish because otherwise you're not going to really notice much results and the last bit of the question was also why did you go natural okay so uh, my hair was relaxed from a young age around nine um, so I was, I was relaxed most of my life and in the back of my mind I always knew that at some point I would go natural because I thought it would be a shame not to see my natural hair within my adult life um, I started a relaxed hair journey um, I was on that relaxed hair journey for eight years. I kind of set out everything that I achieved to do on that journey. Um, and I got to a stage where I was kind of getting a little bit bored of my hair um, and that natural hair movement was going strong and I was becoming more and more intrigued about wanting to find out about my natural hair. Um, I was following so many like natural hair pages and I got to a point where I was like, you know what, I am definitely ready to do this. Uh, and there was so much more information out there on how to care for natural hair, lots more products, you know, to help us to care for our hair so I kind of felt that you know that I, I could do it because prior to that I was hearing a lot of negative things about natural hair being hard work it's difficult and it was kind of off-putting hearing all of those things um, but then I did see some fellow um, hair bloggers going natural and I thought you know well if they can do it then I can do it um, so I just decided that it was time to do it and it happened all in the right time another thing as well is that I always said to myself that you know what if I was relaxed and I had um, daughters, you know, how would I be able to tell them that their natural hair is beautiful? If they came to me asking me, you know, why their hair is different to mine, you know, I wouldn't be able to tell them, you know, um, you know, the, the positive things about, well, I could tell them positive things about their hair, but they would then ask me, why is my hair not natural? And it would have been difficult to kind of you know, um, be an example to them without my hair looking the same. So luckily, everything kind of fell into place at the right time. My, um, Olivia was the only one that was born at the time, but she was a baby, so she didn't really know much about natural and relaxed hair kind of thing. But they're at a stage now where, you know, they can see my hair and, you know, they love their hair. And it's just nice that our hair is, is the same. So yeah, as I said, things kind of fell into place at the right time. Okay, so the next question is, I try not to manipulate my hair too much. Do you have any tips? Okay, yeah, so what you can do is wear low maintenance hairstyles. So like a twist out like what I've got, you can try a braid out or wash and go because with those styles, you don't really have to do much with it. Once the style has been created, you can just stretch your hair out before bed if that's what you do. Then the next day, you can just refresh it and go. There's nothing really to kind of, no combing or, or styling involved. Um, alternatively, you can also um, wear protective styles like box braids or cane rolls or something like that as well. Um, that will stop you from touching your hair, but just make sure that the hairstyles are not too tight. Okay, so the next question is, how to avoid hair breakage and why do we trim our ends? 
Okay, so how to avoid hair breakage. So make sure that you, um, when you're washing your hair, that you're deep conditioning as well afterwards every time. Make sure you're incorporating both protein and moisture to balance your hair, as I mentioned earlier, and that will prevent breakage. Make sure you're moisturizing your hair often so your hair doesn't dry out. Um, take care of the ends of your hair because if the ends of your hair are breaking, then you're not going to be able to retain length. And just basically just being careful with your hair when you're handling it day to day, when you're washing, styling and all that stuff. In terms of why we trim our ends, they are the oldest parts of our hair. They need to be cared for. Um, and it just keeps them in good condition because sometimes we can get lots of single strand knots or um, knots um, or um, split ends. So we want to make sure that we remove them so the ends remain healthy because if you leave those, sometimes they can become worse. And if you're trying to retain length, you're not taking care of the ends of your hair, then you won't really notice uh, much growth. So the next question is, how do you retain your length? Okay, so I've actually got a really good video that I've done recently giving six tips on what I do to care for my hair um, and to retain length. So I'll put the link in the description box. Definitely check that out. Um, but some of the things that I do, um, again, is as I said, it's kind of moisturizing and sealing my ends with um, oils or butters to kind of protect them. Um, I keep my hair off of my shoulders if I'm kind of wearing like um, like a like a harsh clothing. I don't like my hair to be um, rubbing against anything because that can damage it as well. Um, and when I'm detangling my hair, I take care. I'm gentle. I'm careful because obviously if I'm rough with my hair, it's going to damage them. So it's just making sure that you protect the ends at all costs because otherwise if you don't, then you're not going to be able to retain length. So the next question is... What's your favorite combo for wash and goes? So I haven't done a wash and go for the longest time because whenever I do them, I always end up with serious knots and tangles, which just takes me ages to get rid of. Um, but a combo that I love, and I say a combo, it's only one product, but it is Twisted Sister Amazing Dream Curl Gel. That product is so good. It defined my curls amazingly well. Um, it made my hair feel kind of moisturized as well. I didn't get any flaking or any hardness or any crunch. So that is a really good product to check out. I'll put that product in the description box. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for a gel to use, then definitely check that out. Okay, so the next question is, Hi dear, I have thin hair, but when I wash it, it shrinks back to my scalp and I don't know how to retain the length. Okay, so um, when you say retain the length, I'm assuming that you mean that you want your hair to be elongated, stretched out rather than all shrunken up. So what you can do is after you've um, washed your hair, um, moisturize your hair and then twist it up okay twist your whole hair up twisting your hair is going to keep your hair stretched so the next day when you style it then you can let it out and your hair should still be have a bit of length um you can also try using flexi rods flexi rods are so good for stretching out the hair i've got a video on that but that is one way i love to, to stretch out my hair as well um you can do african um threading you can try that out as well it's another good method um but yeah any one of those is a perfect way for stretching out your hair um just to kind of you know keep the length so you can enjoy your hair rather than it being all shrunk up because we all know how it can be shrinkage can feel like your hair is not growing or is it's just you know there's nothing there but but yeah, try it, those stretching techniques. Keep your hair stretched out. So the next question is, I used a protein treatment a month ago and since then my hair texture changed and it's harder to get my hair hydrated. It doesn't also curl up as before. What do you think may be the cause? I don't use heat on my hair. Okay, so you might have something what they call um, protein sensitive hair. Protein sensitive is when um, someone uses a protein conditioner on their hair and their hair just feels hard, stiff, dry, you know, uh, maybe your hair just doesn't like too much protein. It could also be that you used um, the wrong protein conditioner because there are three different types of protein conditioners. There's a light protein, a medium one and a heavy one. Um, and they're all designed for different uses. So if you've used a heavy one, then that's something that um, might not have been needed as well. But as I said, it could be that, yeah, you've kind of given yourself too much protein and it's kind of um, affected your hair. So it's worth um, thinking about those things that I've mentioned. And last but not least, um, the last question is, what was your best method to grow your hair? Okay, so my best method to grow my hair has to be consistency. Okay, I mean, you might think consistency, but the fact that all those processes that I follow, so washing, deep conditioning, moisturizing, scalp massages, all those things, if I'd done just one thing, I wouldn't get the results 
that, that, I, that I've achieved. So it's been a combination of doing all of those things, consistently doing it, that has helped me to get to where I am because you can try all those things, but if you're not consistently doing it, you'll never see results. But So consistency is definitely key. So guys, that concludes part two of this Q&A. Um, I've really enjoyed answering your questions. Sorry if I didn't get to answer um, a question that you asked me. There were just so many questions. It was just impossible to get through each and every one of them. Um, I will try my best to respond back to some of you or send you links to videos that I've got on my channel that may answer that question. Um, but yeah, I hope I was able to answer your question, as I said, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Also share it with someone if you think they'll find this video useful and don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye. Oh,